if you guys have watched my channel before, you may know that I'm a massive fan of the Cairo Khan defense after E4 C6. If you haven't watched my channel before, well, you now know that I'm a massive fan of the Cairo Khan defense from the black side. But in today's game, I'm going to be showing you my recommendation for playing against the Cairo Khan and having some pretty interesting uh, games. I, I, I have a lot of interesting games against the Cairo Khan in this line. And this one is no exception. The move here is B3. Now this is a typical gambit against E6 and the French defense in this. This is a typical a typical line which the computer doesn't mind. However, in this scenario, <clears throat> the computer isn't such a fan of it. The reason is because this bishop is not blocked in by the pawn on e6 that is there in the French defense. And so after knight c3 attacking the pawn, knight f6 defending the pawn, I play knight g to e2. Because in the French line, so imagine this pawn is on c8 and this pawn is on e6. Queen, e, queen e2 is the move, but that doesn't work against the Karo because the bishop gets out to f5 and easily defends the pawn, whereas with a pawn on e6 it can't do that. So knight g to e2 is the move, because after, well, typically after bishop f5, you have knight g3 attacking the bishop and the pawn, the bishop retreats to g6, and now you can go for queen e2, and you have three attackers compared to two defenders, and black can't really add a third defender. <clears throat> but my opponent plays bishop g4, pinning my knight to my queen. I have seen this variation a few times, but simply pawn to h3. Because if the bishop retreats, then g4 gets played, the bishop goes to g6, and you can play moves like knight f4 to attack the bishop, or moves like bishop g2, where you justify playing h3 and g4, by saying, well, now I can develop my bishop to its fee in Keto square on g2 without having to waste time playing g3 because I just play g4 to attack your bishop. So with all that said, my opponent just takes. And I take with the queen. That might look a bit strange because it blocks the bishop in, but the point is, is that I'm winning this pawn back. If my opponent tries to defend with something like queen to d4, I can just castle defend the bishop, and then there's opportunities for discoveries with my knight, now the bishop's defended by the king. So, <clears throat> my opponent plays knight b to d7, with the intention, after this is played, and I win the pawn back, of playing knight to f6. Because I'm never going to take this, because it gives away my arguably my best piece and the whole point of the opening is to get the bishop to this diagonal so I'm not going to trade it off just to somewhat damage the pawn structure so I just drop the queen back to f3 so I open up an avenue for this bishop I can castle I can play something like g4 g5 to attack the knight and start a kingside attack and I also have the bishop pair this is a very easy opening now so e6 opening up his bishop Long castle, a5, trying to go a4. So I play a4 myself. b5 can't really be played because the c6 pawn hangs. And you could also just do this. Although, if you were to take probably something like a4 would be played trying to break through. But the c6 pawn hangs with check anyway. So, my opponent's attack is stopped for now, and after bishop e7, g4, my attack is alive. Because if I get g5 and enforce the knight to move, my bishop now opens up. And if I can play g5 to keep f6 under control, then his bishop won't be able to challenge me. And my bishop will be an absolute monster. Which again, is the point of the opening. We give the pawn away, at the very start, we give the pawn away, so that we get our bishop to the Fianchetto square quickly. We keep the lines in the center open through having our opponent take us. We win the pawn back. And then we say, look, I've got a sick bishop and you don't. 
So bishop e7, g4, castle, g5, knight d5, h4. Like I say, securing this pawn, giving it a defender, so that this pawn can control the f6 square to stop bishop to f6. My opponent plays b5. And here the best move is queen e4 apparently to not only defend a4 but also prepare bishop to d3 to threaten checkmate. <clears throat> I instead play bishop d3 with the intention of after takes queen e4 which is the same idea threaten checkmate and threaten the pawn on a4. The reason that bishop d3 is not a good move is because of one move. And that's f5. Who who plays f5 here? Who? You just leave the e6 pawn to die, essentially. Like, and then this bishop is still a monster. No one plays that. No one ever plays that. Now, knight to b4. Was it b4? Your yeah, knight to b4 doesn't even work. Because after knight b4, I have a sacrifice here. And like I say, with this bishop, okay, apparently the move is bishop takes g7. I'm not even going to pretend like I would have seen this. Um, yeah. Yeah, what, whatever you say, Stockfish. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Too right. Why didn't we see that? It's obvious. Anyway, b takes a4. Queen e4, like I said, threatening checkmate, threatening the a4 pawn, because I don't want to take with my b pawn and open up the b file for my opponent. So g6. And then I take on a4, which is apparently a mistake, and I should have just gone for it straight away. Which in retrospect makes sense. But... I, I decide to instead just take on a4, and I'm like, look, h5 is coming anyway. You can't stop that. Now, the reason that queen takes a4 is a bad move is because the knight can come to b4 and effectively shut my queen from ever getting back into the game. Unless I play c3, it also threatens my bishop, but he doesn't find that. He plays knight b6, attacking my queen this way. So I swing straight back to e4. I could have taken on c6. I didn't want to because I didn't see the need to go pawn grabbing. I thought that it was much more logical to instead set up my attack because we're castled on opposite sides. So he goes queen d5. Which is a really good move, because if I take, then he can probably take with the c-pawn, fix his structure, and we are equal material, and I'm not going to checkmate him without my queen. Probably. I mean, if this rook could ma magically teleport to h8, it would be checkmate. But my opponent wouldn't cooperate. <laughs> he probably wouldn't let me do that, nor would chess.com. Chess so I play f4. The reason I play f4 is to defend g5 so that h5 can be played, because otherwise the g5 pawn uh, could hang. Now, I was more than happy to trade the queens here, because I thought my bishop is really strong attacking this pawn. It's going to have to be defended by something like a to c8. My bishop is still uncontested, and now that I was able to play um, f4, h5 is coming and it's not so easy because let's just do something like this uh, my opponent could play like you know of obviously if he takes with this pawn then it's mate not like that it's mate but if he takes with the f pawn the i mean imagine c6 isn't hanging here there's the sacrifices Right? There are potential sacrifices. Well, apparently not like that. Well, taking on g6 first to cut off the escape square. But you get what I mean. It's not simple. There is still an attack, even though the, tr the queens can get traded. So he goes a4. Trying to open up 
the attack for him. And I go h5, which is the only good move. The reason is, because again, if the queens get traded, all the things that I said before apply. But if he takes on b3, I don't take back. Because if I take back, the bishops get traded. And the queens probably get traded. And my structure is also really damaged. No, I take on a, I, I take on g6. Now, if the queens are traded here, I'm mating him because this bishop cuts off the dark squares for the king. So, what does my opponent do? My opponent takes back with the uh, f pawn, and here there is one winning move for white. The move is rook takes, rook takes h7, sacrificing the rook. The reason is because if the queens try to get traded and my opponent tries to do this, I have the intermezzo of rook g7 check, king h8, and I can just take the queen, or I can set up a windmill because of bishop check and the queen can't block in a good way so i could just win some of his pieces outright yeah and he's losing a lot more than a kingside pawn on h7 he plays rook to a1 which is actually isn't a bad idea okay so you know we already know what happens if queen takes queen. If king takes h7, queen takes g6 is mate. That's the point. He plays rook a1 check. With the idea of going bishop a3 check. Now if I play bishop b2. It's not so easy. Because now my bishop's gone. And he wins the rook back. Because the rook can't move with check. So I play king b1. Now this looks really scary because of b takes c2 check. But bishop takes. He has no checks. His queen can't check me in a good way. He can go to b5 but then I go to a2. And the rook can't get to a8 in time. Because he's getting mated. Because the bishop blocks the check. So... We get this, and my opponent tries to trade queens. Now again, if I take here with the bishop, my opponent can't actually take like that, because, again, my bishop's cut off his escape squares, and he's getting mated. It's like back rank mate, which is kind of, kind of wild. But I check on g7, king h8, again. Because the bishop defends the rook. Keep it simple. And then I take the queen. And rook c8. My opponent actually resigns after playing rook c8. Because rook h1 is mate. The king is dead. And that's the game. Thank you very much for watching. If you stayed until the end. Please drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I also just hit 100 subscribers. Which is pretty wild. So... Thank you very much if you are one of those subscribers. And if you aren't, get on it. Join the club. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.